Well, as much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother, here departed. We therefore commit his body to the ground. Hello. Hello. To earth, ashes to ashes, what you're watching dust to dust. has nothing to do with the film sure, you're going to see, has it? No. You see, what happened was, alive. halfway through the film, one of the main characters, a man who played part of Big Jim, Big Jim, Big Jim, Big Jim. He died. He sees the gentleman currently being buried at the moment. He played the part of Big Jim. He died. So, if halfway through the film, you see another actor playing the part of Big Jim, you'll know the reason why. You'll give him a hint anyway, won't you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'll do that. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Amen. Yes. George Fellow. Once in a lifetime, a film comes along that changes the course of screen history. This is not it. Nevertheless, we the makers fondly wish to dedicate our film to all those faces we used to watch every Saturday morning on our cinema screen. Those wonderful faces long since gone that we are now forced to watch every night on our television screens. Anne Rutherford. Frank McHugh. John Payne. Where's Wayne Morris? Lynn Barry. Wayne Morris. Elisha Cook Jr. Classic. I ordered Wayne Morris. And that's Veronica Lake with the Peekaboo Bang. Mr. President, where's Wayne Morris? Our film begins in the year 1946. The world was recovering from a long and devastating war. I wanted Wayne Morris. The United Nations were assembling in New York to decide the future of mankind. Meanwhile, in Carlisle... In the foyer of a music hall... Not 100 yards from the nearest British restaurant... Is that Wayne Morris? Excuse me. Yes? Um, may I see Mr. Morecambe, please? Oh, is that possible? Well, as you can hear, he's on stage at the moment, miss. Oh, I see. Why don't you go around and ask Pop, the stage doorkeeper, if you can see him? He'll look after you. Oh, um, right. Thank you. We'll honeymoon in Cairo in a brand new old gyro. Then home by rocket in a wink. Do you mind? We'll settle down near Dallas in a little plastic palace. It's not as crazy as you think. Oh, no. Imagine me on a first anniversary with someone like me in the nursery. It doesn't sound bad, and if it can be had, we'll buy that dream. Be honest. What's a flaming noise going on back there? Hey, what was going on behind that curtain? I'm bloody certain more than what was going on in front of it. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Manzini. He's got to go. That's the third time this 
sweet. It's all right. I've already fired. We leave tonight before he kills him. Yes, you can't borrow myself. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Manzini, Manzini will attempt to close a nice fly pole. Stop! Stop! No! Glad these have come back again. Yeah. That's a good laugh, isn't it? It certainly does. Yes. Right. Ready for the next show. Mr. I wonder what's wrong. A little girl. You tell by the writing, can you? No, she's outside. Could have been a fan. No, he's outside too. Don't forget your laundry, Mr. White. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> TFM. <laughs> What's her name? Kathy. Kathy? Cousin Bert's little girl. Bert? Wasn't he the one who got left behind on the beaches at Dunkirk? There were others too, you know. I know. You know that a mother ran away with an American soldier after that. No. Yeah. Father called Eisenhower. Not, uh... No, no, no. It was Sid Eisenhower. Oh. Sergeant Cook from Milwaukee. Oh. Well, what's she doing here? I don't know. I'll have to ask her. She came up from under my train today. Yes. You must be exhausted. It took six hours. You should have changed the crew. Yes, it only takes ten hours. Oh. <laughs> Hungry? Yes, I am. We could go out and get something to eat. Would you like that? Yes, I would. Oh, but first of all, um... Kathy? Uncle Eric. <laughs> Bert's little girl. Mm -hmm. The last time I saw you, you were here. Your legs only came to there. Look at them now, all the way down to the ground. And you had hair. I still have, but it's in the dressing room. <laughs> I'm 21 now. No. Good Lord, you're old enough to vote. <laughs> but not old enough to talk to strange men, especially musicians. Hello. This is it. I would like you to meet the nicest, kindest, most generous man in Great Britain today. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, he isn't here at the moment. So this is my partner, <laughs> Ernie White. How do you do? This is Kathy. Yeah, say hello. Hello. That's close enough. I thought you said she only came up to here. She does when she sits down. Oh, it must be the high heels. Well, stop wearing them. Where are you staying? Oh, um, well, I, I thought I could stay with you. There's an empty room at my digs. That's the way it's going to stay, Geraldo. She's staying with us. We've got plenty of room. We have? We have. We have. So it's all back to our place. All except you, Ambrose. I'll get my case. Allow me. Ah! You don't lean on me! Look! What's the matter, Captain? There's Catherine? somebody up there. I'll go and take a look. How many, how many hands have I got up? Five. I... Look, do me a favor, love, will you? Dip to the dresser room and get a glass of water. 
It's over there. You can't miss it. It's just down. Fool. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, drink that. There was no one there. But there was. I saw him. He, he had a horrible face. You saw him, didn't you? Well, no, not really, no. But you saw him, didn't you, Uncle Eric? No, honestly, I didn't, love. I, I really well, I didn't. I did. Of course you did. I want to go home now. Shouldn't he see a doctor? <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yes. we'll get him to a doctor. Yeah. Oh, get him out his up. Yes, I... Oh, for <laughs> I'll give you a hand. No, easy, easy. Easy, it's difficult with this thing around my neck. Yeah, don't worry, look. No, no. Relax. That's it, you see? Look, I'll show you. That? Like that. Yeah. Oh. No, don't, 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 easy! Don't do that! Don't! Oh. How do I look? <laughs> well, there are any other survivors? Oh. <laughs> No, no, you've got to get into bed. Into bed. Hey, can I make a wish? Oh, You know, I'd feel much better if I, if I was in my own bed. You can't do that, can you? Anyway, because you promised Kathy. And you can't... Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Here, the doctor said you've got to have one of these. Uh -huh. oh. Yeah, they taste awful. What are they? Mothballs. Moth -moth Let's have a look. That's what he says. Bad right, mothballs. Whatever they are, they taste terrible. <laughs> Read your book. Uh. <laughs> Yeah? It's me. Can I come in? Yes. Fancy a cup of something? Milk and sugar? Please. That's a relief. Thank you. All right. All right. What is it? I've told you, it's something. If you want to put a name to it, it's Coco. I think. You know, you know you can stay here as long as you like, don't you? You know that. Have you uh, brought your Russian book with you? Mm -hmm. Good. Otherwise, the landlady will think we're living together. I think she's a bit worried about Ernie and I. Just that, well, I had these two weeks off, so I thought I'd come up and see you. I feel so lonely, you see. I don't think I can take any more. Don't drink it. I, mean, I haven't got any family. What are you talking about? I'm family. So is he when he's awake. Look, I'll look after him until your dad comes home. Think he ever will? Of course, well, he's bound to. I owe him money. Here. Thank you. Oh. 
Oh, thank you. No, 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 keep it. There, uh, there is one little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, do you mind not calling me Uncle Eric? Because it makes me, makes me feel a bit old. Oh, but you're not old, Uncle Eric. Thank you. Fine. Well, I'll say goodnight. Good night, Kathy. Good night, Eric. Is Catherine Chalmers? Yes. Am I right in thinking your mother's maiden name was Austin? Yes. Good. They told me at the theater I might find you here. My card. Miss Chalmers, I have to tell you that I represent your great uncle Robert. Great uncle Robert? He is unfortunately now deceased. Oh. Deceased. Yes, last, passed away last week at his home in Scotland. Scotland. But even I'm happy to tell you that he has left. Super amount of money. Money. Well, you better come in. Um, Mr. Morecambe, Mr. Wise, and excuse me. This is Mr. Mackay. Uh, Mackay, actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Ah. <laughs> uh, gentlemen. <laughs> Is there, a, is there a gramophone in the house? That's a gramophone. Oh. <laughs> we actually use these things to rehearse with, you see, when we're doing a new act. We're going to do a miming act, you mm. see. Listen. We'll get the lilacs in the spring again And walk together down an English land Until I... Gentlemen, I am sorry, but I simply have no time to waste. Mr. McKay's... Mackay. ...is a solicitor, and he's acting on behalf of my great-uncle Robert. And I was instructed by him, posthumously, you understand, to seek out each of his remaining relatives and play to him, or her, <laughs> this record. Thank you. This is Robert McCausland Austin. Speaking to you all from the grave, from the grave, from the grave. As you are all aware, I was an extremely rich and eccentric man from the grave. So I have made it a provision in my will that those members of the Austin clan wishing to benefit from my bounty needs must gather at Austin Hall, the family seat in Scotland, for the reading of the aforementioned document. So, if you're not there... You won't get your share. What did he say? You won't get your share. And now, Miss Catherine, I must ask you formally, if you wish to be present... He's changed at his voice. No, it's him. If you wish to be present at the reading of the will... Yes. When did you say it was? Midnight tomorrow. Now, I have arranged for the night train to stop at Penrith in exactly... 23 and a half minutes. If we start now, we can just make it. I have a, excuse me, I have a conveyance at the door. Uh, could I just have a word? What, uh, I, beg you, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry, but what you don't seem to understand is, is if she goes to Scotland, I've, I've got to go with her. No, no, no you can't do that. Uh, we've got to be in Darlington on Monday morning. Well, Darlington listen doesn't to me, really the, matter. Yeah, no, I mean, got we got haven't got to be there till Monday No, evening. no, we've got Monday the bank call at 11 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> and we're putting the new number in as well. Now, will listen, you listen? I'm sorry. We're all sorry. You see, the fact of the matter is this, that if Miss... Uh, Catherine. C Catherine wants to share in the family fortune, she simply has to be there. Well, how much money is there in the family fortune? Ten million pounds. Oh, 
Well, what are we waiting for? I'll get dressed. Yes, uh, um, do hurry, Miss. Um, we, we've only got, what, 22 and a half minutes. What are you doing? Well, don't you want to hear the other side of the record? Don't just stand there. Bring the luggage and pay the man. We've only got a few minutes. Come along, my dear. <laughs> what about Ernie? What's keeping him? I've no idea. Well, go and get him. I'll go get him. Austin and my sleeping berth. I thought she was a wee bit tired. Excuse me, sorry. See, we have a first class compartment to ourselves, probably done the train. How did you manage that? Oh, I had a word with the guard. Half a crown. Oh, that reminds me. Oh, what happened? Put that light out. What's going on? Look at that, Johnny. The guard told me there was something wrong with the light. It's nothing to worry about, though. They'll have a take soon. Oh. until we get there? About six hours. It's a long trip. It is, it is. Listen, it just occurs to me, would you two gentlemen care for a wee game of cards? Just to while away the journey, eh? I wouldn't say no. Oh, why not? For money? For money? He's very good, you know. Oh, oh, oh. is he? <laughs> I'm not as good as that.
game should we play? Chase the ace. Top the eight, you knock out. Okay. Dax the wall. Do some spades while get a cup. Thank you. My card deal. I deal. Oh, you're dealing, are you? I just have. I'm in. Oh, my. Uncle Felix. Cathy, my dear. Were, were you followed? I don't think so. Why? We were in great danger. That's why I wrote you that note. What danger? What do you mean? Well? You did say Jack's too open. Yes. Well, I'll open. Oh, I'll stay. I'm in. How many? Three. Three. I'll play these. My open, so I'll bet. Two pounds. Your two pounds? And another two pounds. I'll cover that. And another five. Oh, oh come on, what's going oh, on? The blackout was over. Oh, no. Oh, that's lovely, that is, isn't really? it? Why don't they do something? Last time I tried. Again, why don't they pay their bills? Tickets, please. Gentlemen, gambling. I don't have to report this to the railway police. Now, just a minute, my good man. I am a solicitor. He's a solicitor. I thought you were going to get the lights fixed. Absolutely. Oh, he's gone. Shows the money. After him. <laughs> Must have gone this way. McKay came to see you tonight. He did not. It's all taking shape. It's part of his plan, don't you see? What plan? What are you talking about, Uncle Felix? Stay very close to me, Kathy. Yes. Where's our money? Money, gentlemen? Come on, hand it over. Kathy! Oh, thank God, you're What have you been up to with her? Excuse me, sir. It's what she's been up to with him. Oh, my God! Do you know him? Felix. Who is he? He's... He was one of the Austins. He's an uncle of yours, Miss Catherine. So, sir. Don't touch anything, sir. I shall have to report all this to the railway police. What? Well, this is the first time I've ever had a murder on my train. Murder? What are you blathering about, man? It's perfectly obvious the poor fellow committed suicide. I'm sorry, Miss Catherine. Anybody with half an eye can see that. Am I right, gentlemen? Ooh. So I would suggest to you, my good man, that you get this train moving again too sweet. Now, look here. Give this to the police. That is the address at which we shall all be staying for the next few days. What about Uncle Felix? Oh, yes. Well, uh, we do have an empty coffin on the train, sir. We can put him in that. What a good idea. Ah. Uh, <coughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my 
Thank you. That'll do nicely. And, uh, put it off with us tomorrow. All right? Just leave it to me, sir. No trouble at all, sir. Good. Uh, thank you. Have you no respect? I'll let the family know we're here. me dream all day. We can go in there. The family is expecting us. What about Uncle Felix? Yes. Well, I've broken that awful news to them. We're putting Uncle Felix in the pantry for the night. He, he'll keep better there. Right, Big Jim? Yes, sir. That's him. That's Big Jim. Before you do that, Big Jim, I wonder if you would mind putting the luggage in the side room, would you? <laughs> Thank you. This is where. Ah, good night, Big Jim. Good night, Mr. Mackay. Yes, well, come along then. <coughs> the Austins don't like to be kept with. Mackay? In Florida. May I present Miss Catherine Chambers? How do you do, my dear? Welcome to Austin Hall. Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Dame Flora. Oh, please call me Auntie. Well, Auntie Flora, mm -hmm. this is my Uncle Eric. Uncle Eric? Yes, on her father's side. Thank goodness for the... And this is my small associate and, and partner, Mr. Ernie Wise. No relation. Charmed. Oh, Miss Catherine, allow me to present you to the rest of the family. This is your cousin Zelda. Hello. Cousin, cousin Zelda. Zelda. And your second cousin Milton from the USA. Hello. Second, second cousin, cousin Milton, Milton from, from the, the USA? USA? And I think that's taken care of the introduction. And I, I think, think that's taken care of the, the introduction. introduction. I'm from the American branch of the family. An Austin from Boston. Oh, you're a Boston Austin. A Boston Austin. <laughs> you look more like Alice from Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing here anyway? This is supposed to be a family affair. I haven't had an affair all week. Well, if it wasn't for them, I might not be here at all. Mm, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. <laughs> no, no, she has as much right to be here as the next man. <laughs> Sorry, Mother. <laughs> Say that again. Right. It does sound better with music. <laughs> what did you say these gentlemen do? They're comedians, madam. Entertainers. You've heard them on workers' playtime. Do 
workers actually have for playtime. Somebody hold this. I'll hold it. You would, wouldn't you? You mean they receive money? I believe so. Listen, if there's going to be trouble, we're going to leave right now. Mr. McKay, would you... McCoy. Oh. Would you please phone for a taxi? Uh, I'm afraid that won't be possible. Why not? Due to the storm this evening, the telephone lines are down. What storm? There was no storm this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, we are having some trouble with the generator in the basement, but you will find oil lamps scattered liberally throughout the household whose wicks merely require hand trimming. Who is he? That's Rivers, the family retainer. Very close to my late uncle. How long has your uncle been dead? A week. Are you sure? I hope so. We buried him. Might I remind you all that the reading of the will will take place in the library at midnight tonight, which is in precisely four hours from now. Perhaps Miss Catherine and our guests would like to attend to their ablutions after their journey. Walk this way. If they could walk that way, they wouldn't need the talcum powder. I knew somebody would have to say that. I put you in here, Miss Catherine. It was your great uncle's last resting place. He died here. In that very bed. Ah, uh, <laughs> um, thank you, Rivers. See you later. Yes. This way, gentlemen. May I say, gentlemen, what a pleasure it is to welcome you as guests to Austin Hall. I deem it an especial honor to battle for you. Oh, you know I work then, Rivers. Oh, yes, sir. I'm a fan. Watch. <laughs> That's very good, but we don't do that. <laughs> No, we do, we do. Da! We do that. Doesn't that hurt, sir? Yes, that's my hands. What, what do you like us doing best? I like a bit strolling around the stage, hands on each other's shoulders, singing underneath the arches. Well, we don't do that either. All right. <laughs> that's Flanagan and Alan. I know, but you did ask me what I liked best. Hold back, tack. Want to wander around your room, back, gentlemen. Back, back, See those tumble down old shanks. I'm going back. Back, back. They say that Bonnie Prince Charlie once slept in that bed. Now, look at this, ordered his horse. to have met him when he was alive. Hello? Ready yet? Almost. 
I can't thank you enough for the clothes. Nonsense, what are cousins for? Up till yesterday, I didn't even know I had a cousin. I'm so pleased, even though it'll mean we'll all get less money. Oh, I'm sorry. Will you be long? Aunt Flora doesn't like to be kept waiting. I'll be ready in a few minutes. Good. Bye-bye. Bye. How's that? Oh, fresh weather. Oh. You'll be able to scratch yourself to death in church on Sunday. Oh, no. Oh, dear. You know, it's very unusual. It's beginning to frighten me. Well, don't show it to anybody. No, 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 the wolf, you know. Pack wolf to death. Yeah. Look, the rich old uncle dying. The reading of the will. The business on the train. That's exactly what's happening to us. But, riding in the marsh. How'd you get there? But, riding in the marsh. Good old school spray. But, Oh, come in. How do I look? Oh, wonderful. Oh. How many clothing companies did that one cost you? Um, no. It was older. She let me have it. Oh, she let me have it. That <laughs> can be arranged. Oh. <laughs> you mustn't laugh. That's a very pretty dress. <laughs> no, no. Look at you, dinner suit. Yeah. Well, these are our working clothes. All the time we wear these. Mm. They've got a step shoes on, haven't yes, they? Yes, yeah. To the dance floor. Oh. Steps. One more, he could have written a book. Who's your tailor? Why? That was going to be my second question. Oh. I love your dress. Thank you. My mother used to wear more than that in bed. Excuse me. That's disgusting. That means dinner, sir. Oh, don't yes. rush. Don't hmm? run in dignity at all times. Come on. <laughs> um, uh, sorry we're late. Yes. If you don't mind. We'll go straight in. <laughs> Sweet. Must you dance every dance with the same fortunate man you have been? I'd like to make a trunk call to a Miss Catherine Chalmers. That's right, Chalmers. At Austin Hall, Austin Point, Argyllshire, Scotland. Thank you. I've never played there, no. Oh. Hmm. Excuse me. Three. <laughs> Tell me, Dame Flora, why is your husband not with us? Oh, he passed away some time ago. <laughs> oh, at least you know where he is at night. Mm. You said you didn't fool around with women. No, what I said was, when it comes to women, I don't fool around. Gentlemen, <laughs> won't you please do one of your amusing charades just for me? Of course, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, would you please sit down? What happens is now, uh, in our show that we do together, we always close the bill at the end because we follow the monkey act. 
And everybody thinks they're an encore. What did he say? He said something about an encore. Oh, wait. Later. Mm -hmm. Later. Now, anybody here who can play? I can. Yes, I realize that, but we're talking about the piano. Try me. Oh. Oh. Yes. Lovely. Is that the music? Oh, of course. Little yeah. Sir Echo. Sir Echo. In F? In F, yes. But don't worry if we sing it in G. <laughs> Have a chip. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. We've just had a request from four people that have just left. <laughs> Sing a little song entitled <laughs> Charlie Chan, you're a different man since you backed in to the electric fan. <laughs> now, while you're singing this song, I want you, the people, to remain seated. I want no hooliganism, no standing up, trying to touch him because of his age. Things are liable to drop off. <laughs> <laughs> Let him finish your song first, Dame Flora, and then he's yours. Thank you, Professor. Two, three, four. Oh, little Sir Echo, how do you do? They even walk off key. Over and play. You're a nice little fellow, I know by your voice, but your airway's so far away. Hello. Hello, you're supposed to hold it, hold it. You're supposed to say hello. It's like you did before. Two, three. Hello. 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 Just a minute, love. Hello. Just a minute. She's dead. But how? Poison in her whiskey, I'd say. But I gave her that. Yes, you did, didn't you? Now, wait a minute. Let's get the lady upstairs. No. Better touch nothing until the police arrive. But you can't just leave her there sitting. Kathy's right. I'll cover her up. As we said before, the lines are down. Rivers! Oh, <laughs> get one of the staff to cycle down to the village, will you? They've all gone home for the night, sir, as per your instructions. Ah! The window! <gasps> Excuse me. Who are you, man? And what have you been up to out there? Look, it's the name of one of the guards of Creighton. Creighton? The insane asylum is. Well, no, we were trouble, see. Trouble? What kind of trouble? Ah, well, you see, one of the prisoners has escaped. Is he dangerous? Oh, definitely, miss. Completely out of his head. Homicidal maniac. Completely uncontrollable. You know what I mean? This puts him passport to death, too. They searched the grounds for him. Yeah, we're searching the grounds for him. That's right. So make sure all your doors and windows are locked and bolted. And if you hear any strange noises, don't worry, that'll be us. I've got me an out in the mirrors as well. It's all really good. What does he look like? Yeah, well, this is a great big fella. He's about six foot three with a scar just about where his right ear used to be, you know what I mean? What's the matter with lady? Nothing now, she's dead. We can't telephone the police. Don't worry, miss. I'll let the police know right away. Well, I'd better be going. Don't forget, people. Keep everything locked and bolted. Yes, we will. Good. We know you go. Well, if you'll excuse me, I go and prepare for the reading of the will. I could do with a breath of fresh air. Be careful. Remember what the guard said. There's a lunatic out there. 
There's two in here. I'll take my chances. That looks suspicious. Another drink. Oh, yeah. Well, I... No, thank you. A whiskey for you, sir? Oh, well, if it's a whiskey, I wouldn't say yes. Are you there? Read the will. I have my instruction. Ah, Rivers, have you seen Mr. Milton? Isn't he inside? No, he isn't. He was drinking a lot. Drink can do terrible things to a man. So can I, given half a chance. Ah, ah. Please, Miss Selden. Time is running out. Come along. Miss Captain. Gentlemen, this is a family affair. We've got to do something. There's a murderer loose in the house. Drink this. First of all, I must read the will. No. Only then I think is we've it... all had enough for one night. Never thought I'd ever hear myself say that. I agree I with Miss Zelda. Zelda. Tempers, Tempers are becoming, becoming frayed. Things, Things will look, look better, better in the morning. morning. But what about the bodies? I think we should leave them until the police arrive. If they arrive. Well, they will, sir. They always do. Rivers, please, just go and find that guard and get him to bring the police now. Very good, miss. I'll cover up the bodies. No, I'll do that. Sorry. If you two carry on like this, there'll be nothing left for these two young ladies to inherit. That's right. There's only you two left. <laughs> The generator still needs seeing to. I'll go and fix it. Not too fast, I hope. I do my best work in the dark. Right. I'll just go down to the basement and fix things. Why don't you two gentlemen see these ladies to the rooms? See you all later. I hope.
said it before. And you'll say it again. It's uncanny. Everything is in this book just as it's happening to us now. It's happening to the two people in the book. They might as well be us. What happens next? They try to murder us. <laughs> How? It says there's a big stone slab on top of the bed and it falls down. <laughs> Did you hear that? No. Ah! It came from over here. From behind this new painting. How do you know it's a new painting? The paint's still wet. I'm looking for a secret panel. These old houses usually have one. Oh, oh don't worry about that. Yeah? I found that this morning. It's like those early Boris Karloff films. Look! Uh, Mr. McKay, oh, it's McKay. Is a hell of a wait? Sorry to interrupt, fellas. I'll come back later. Don't go. We need you. Well, all right. I'll try anything once. Here, grab this. Now, wait a minute. He's dead. <laughs> We'd better, better cover him up. No, I'll do it. <laughs> oh. That was Kathy. Superintendent Rivers at New Scotland Yard. It's all right, sir. I'm on your side. I'll explain later. He's got Kathy. Who has? I'll explain later. Kathy. Hands up. I'll take that. Over there, all of you. and one man in his time plays many parts. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't forget, people. Keep your doors and windows locked. <laughs> know what I mean? The guard from the asylum. I knew it was him all along. Oh, you're so wise, Mr. Wise. But did you know this? <laughs> Tickets, please. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I shall have to report all this to the railway police. The guard on the train. Where's our money? One moment's indulgence, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you. <laughs> Who is he now? <laughs> Pop! Don't forget your laundry, Mr. Wise. You never paid me for it. But why? Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> Good question. Cousin, Cousin Milton? Milton? But that's impossible, Milton. You're dead. That's right, Zelda. Milton is dead. I killed him. And all the rest. Dame Flora, Uncle Felix, even great Uncle Robert, I killed them all. Including Mackay. Mackay. That's right. But just exactly who are you? I'm Homer. Homer? Milton's twin brother. I didn't know Milton had a twin brother. Disowned by the family and thrown out along with my mother to starve on the street. Look, Homer, I'm sorry, I really am, but it's not our fault. Maybe you are, Miss Kathy. But it isn't going to make me break the promise I gave to mother on her deathbed. What did you promise your mother? To crush you all like the irritating little bugs you are. <laughs> the Austin family money is rightfully mine, however much it is. It's 10 million. What about me? You wait your turn! Sorry. I'll leave it to me. I know what to do. Eric, they're playing our music. We're on stage now. How am I doing? Imagine you with your head on my shoulder. Hurry up, it may come to any minute. And me with my lips getting bolder. Pull the handle now. A sky full of moon and the sweet mellow tune. Not that one. You pull the other one over there. I'll buy the dream. I'll take charge now. Oh, she's she's superintendent, superintendent, you're marvellous. <laughs> Is it really a chief superintendent? Yeah, I just found out. And that's my London number. Thank you. <clears throat> your number, please. No, don't do that! Oh, my neck! Bye-bye. Oh! Bye. 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 <laughs> don't forget to write. Oh, we don't need to write. We'll be seeing you next week. All we have to do is see the lawyer, sign the papers, and pick up the money. <laughs> and anyone else who might be around. <laughs> Bye. Please, please. 
please. I must have a chance to explain. Keep that man quiet, Sergeant. Please. Right, sir. Please. Sorry about that. All these fellows understand. A short, sharp lesson. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Wise. Mr. Morecambe. You've got my telephone number, if need be. Oh, yes. Whitehall, 1212. Correct. Goodbye. Well, that's it, then. What day is it? Monday, I think. We have to be in Darlington by tonight. Yeah, I know. Which way is the station? I have no idea. It was dark when we arrived. Why didn't you get us a lift? Come on. Just a minute. How does it end? It's been right so far. Well, it's completely wrong now. It says here the crook gets away scot-free. The stolen police car pulled up at the side of the remote Scottish country road. Casting a glance over his shoulder to make sure that he was unobserved, the supposed Chief Superintendent Rivers took off his hat and deftly applied the contents of a pot of Leichner cleansing cream to his face. Using a makeup towel, he swiftly removed his disguise, revealing himself to be none other than Cousin Homer. <laughs> Free again, he released his handbrake and set off in his murderous pursuit <laughs> of the hapless Zelda and Kathy. <laughs> I don't know why you waste your money. Come on. Zelda, did she ever kiss you? No, but she steamed my glasses up a couple of times. You know, she said that really her heart belonged to me. Well, how come the rest of her was going out with the other men? When you say that, you met my first partner, didn't you? Where's 
the Scottish border. In bed with a landlady. 